Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching a video about the beat em up game called 99 Venus. Now I'm sure many of you are interested by the fact that I said free game key in the title and I'll hate videos that take an age to get to the good stuff so let's get this out the way first. During this video I'll flash up one character at a time like this and yes that was the first letter of the key and yes I'm going to make you watch the whole thing before I give out all 12 characters. The first person to get all 12 characters and use the code on the American PlayStation Store will get this game for free! With that out the way, let's get on with the video. So this is 99 Vidas, a scrolling beat-em-up game based on the real-life Brazilian gaming website of the same name. I was contacted by a very nice man from Cubite Games asking if I wanted a key for the game so I could give it a go. Here's a note for any other companies who are wondering if I want a key to your PlayStation game. Yes, of course I want free games. Anyway, I'm pretty sure they offered me one as any true gamer can tell that I'm a big fan of Streets of Rage. I mean, it's right there in the bloody English. Trying. The guys that made this beat em up are also fans of Streets of Rage. I mean, you have to be really. You just search beat em up on Google and it's right there. Top answer. But there are a fair few nods to the game present in Qbyte's offering. I'd definitely say it's closer to Streets of Rage than it is to games like Final Fight or the cult classic that is Teenage Mutant Ninja slash Hero Turtles. For this bit of footage of the Turtles arcade game, you can tell that I've used Main because I'm playing here as Leonardo and the original cabinet, you only use Leonardo if Donatello and Michelangelo were already in use. Just look at this control layout. If you got stuck with Leonardo or Raphael, you had to turn your head for the entire game just to look at the screen. I'm getting a bit off track here, so let's get back on the to the topic at hand and that is 99 Venus. 99 Venus is a sprite based beat em up game much in the same way as the other games I just mentioned. It's one to four players and you can choose any of the four people from the Brazilian gaming website to players and there's also a whole bunch of other characters to unlock. Each character has their own strengths but I chose to play as this guy as it reminded me of the fire abilities from Axor of Streets of Rage 2. So you choose who you want to play as and then begin the game. There is a story here about some mystic gems and you need to take them back from some guy and then you're in a car which breaks down and the guy starts talking and, oh, I don't give a shit about the story I just want to beat people up here we are beating dudes up the controls feel good movement is nice and tight plus enemy attacks are fair and by that I mean no one is going to be able to attack you if you're not in line with them fuck you turtles on the ZX spectrum fuck you I'm inclined to agree with you, Dodgy Kebab. As you attack bad guys, you can slowly inch forward mid-attack, which is a nice addition, because in games like Final Fight, you might get a hit on an enemy, then only seconds later, they would be out of your reach because you have to stand totally still while attacking. Like Streets of Rage 2, there are moves to perform by inputting certain commands on the joypad. In between levels, you can upgrade these moves to cause more damage and buy completely new moves by by using in-game currency that you earn during the levels. But the currency is not coins that you collect, but different mm. consoles that you find in breakable boxes. Whoa. Talking about levels, the first one starts off in what appears to be a slum town. The opening backdrop shows a red sports car, which I think is a reference to the opening scene on level one of Double Dragon. Also, if you look at the number plate, it says I'm bad, which I'm pretty sure is a reference to Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. <laughs> I'm bad! As the level plays on, you will end up leaving the slum area and crossing a bridge which leads to a city scene at night. The level ends when you face a boss at a video game store. You know it's a game store because it has the Japanese Mega Drive logo, the Neo Geo logo and the Nintendo logo on the store's sign. And the place is called Roberto Games. So I'm guessing this guy is called Roberto. Roberto proceeds to rip his shirt off Hulk Hogan style and go full game boss mode on you. It's quite cool to see the intentional glitch effect on him. Inside the game shop is how level 2 begins. You can see various game machines in the background and a very bootleg Sonic the Hedgehog on the wall.
Passing through this level gives you the pleasure of listening to one of the great tunes from this game. Have a listen. The music from the slum section on level 1 was also pretty good. However, I wouldn't say every song in this game is up to this standard. Some are just okay, but nothing special. Anyway, on level 2, once you reach the end of the game store, you'll get to a halfway boss, which is this Medusa themed person. Once you beat the boss, you're back outside again with another great song. Progress through this area and beat up more guys until you get to a boss that looks like Kenny Everett. Uh, well, Kenny Everett doing his Sid Snot character. Anyway, this boss is a total prick. The window of opportunity for actually getting a couple of hits in is very limited, so you have to be very well placed and very fast to be in the right place at the right time to get some hits in. Then, you need to be out of the same place very fast or you'll take damage from the barrels that he throws at you wherever you are standing. Then, just in case that wasn't enough of a challenge, during the second half of the fight, mobs will start spawning anywhere and just start to ruin your day even further by lessening the amount of opportunity that you have to hit the boss without taking damage. Once you do beat this guy, it's on to level 3 which is set in a subway station. Progressing through the level will eventually see you board the train and fight more guys there. The halfway boss in this section is this robot who puts up a decent enough fight but is not too hard to beat. This will in turn see you getting on top of the train to continue level 3 there. But it is here that the game throws in a mechanic which I absolutely hate and it's these bloody scrolling rails that will take you out if you don't jump over them. They are far too frequent and are a real pain in the arse. You'll be in the middle of attacking a bad guy but you have to finish your attack or the bad guy will start hitting you back and while you're in mid combo this warning flashes on the side of the screen telling you that another rail is about to appear. So you can choose to finish off your combo and beat the bad guy that you're fighting but to be taken out by the rail or you can stop attacking and risk taking a beating yourself while still trying to jump the rail but it's not like the bad guys will leave you alone so they can avoid the rail. Nope, they'll just attack you and have the rail take them out too. So what you have here is a section that is constantly making you avoid fighting while trying to keep a distance from the bad guys and having to jump these rails. Here's a tip guys, if you make a beat em up game and then add a mechanic which has you actively avoiding beating people up, it's not a good mechanic. While I'm talking about things I didn't like in this game, let's talk about the actual enemies. They are as boring as shit to look at. These guys in shorts. These these guys in football kits, these big guys in t-shirt and trousers, they are the most boring enemies in any beat em up game ever made. The design is just so stock and uninspiring. Another thing about the bad guys is that attacking them is not as satisfying as in other beat em up games. I have managed to pinpoint the reason too. In Streets of Rage 2, punching bad guys has a very satisfying sound effect attached to it. The same can be said about Final Fight. <laughs> Hell, even Double Dragon makes a nice sound when you're beating guys up. But here, the sound effects of the punching sounds are doled out by the vocal sounds made by all the characters. The 
cornerstone of a great beat em up game is that bad guys are satisfying to beat up. And in this department, sound effects are very important. They provide the player with the feedback they need to continue on with what is, and let's be honest, a very repetitive genre. The last criticism of the game I want to make is that the levels feel too long. Now maybe if you had a stopwatch and actually time them, they may be the same size as a level in Streets of Rage, but they don't feel like that. The backgrounds in games like that were changing at a rapid pace to give a feel of progression. Here, each background is on for a very long time and there's not much change, so it feels like it drags and it's been made long just to pad the game out. Mechanically, this game is good. Musically, this game has a fair bit to boast about, but there are a few points that as a beat-em-up, this game gets quite wrong. Hardcore fans of this genre might enjoy the new ideas that this game brings to the table, but I doubt many outside of that bracket of gamers will be too impressed with what's on offer here. But if you've got to this point in the video, then here's something that you'll find funny. Just before the conclusion, I gave the last letter the 12-digit PSN code. So so I'm sure many people haven't reached this part of the video and have rushed off to try it out on their American PSN accounts. How foolish they were for running away so fast. I actually gave out the digits in reverse order. That's right, I gave the first one last and the last one first. So if you're one of the early viewers of this video, quick, give that code a try. You might be the one that ends up winning. Anyway, that's all from me in this video. Bye bye.